Welcome to this YSL Excel VBA tutorial. In this part of our series on writing SQL for Excel files, we're going to use union queries to select from multiple source files. We'll start with a simple example of a union selecting data from two Excel files, and then extend that select statement to include multiple files. We'll also look at how you can mix files with header rows and those with no header rows, and for the final example, how you can mix CSV file data with Excel files. So let's get started. If you've been following along with previous parts of this playlist, you'll be fairly familiar with the basic setup at this point. Things are a little different in this video as we have multiple source files to select our data from, but the general principle is still the same. We have a macro enable workbook which allows us to run a query by clicking this button, and when we do that the aim will be to select data from this combination of files. We've got a movies workbook with a list of 1200 films on a single worksheet, then we have several separate smaller files containing films from a particular year. So we have a couple of small workbooks with column headers, we have one workbook with no column headers, and we also have a basic CSV file as well. The ultimate aim is to put all these together into one single continuous list. I'll stick a link in the video description so that you can download all of these files and follow along and write the code with me if you'd like to. A lot of the code that's written already in the Union Queries workbook relies heavily on Microsoft ActiveX data objects. I'm not going to talk too much about that in this video, as we've already covered it in previous playlists. If you're interested in how that works, I'll point you to this playlist and in particular this video here, How Do I Get Data From A Closed Excel File Using VBA, which will give you all of the basics. I should also mention that the technique we're going to cover in this video we have already used in a video in this playlist, How Do I Get Data From Multiple Workbooks With One Query in VBA? So that's more of a practical application of the theory we're going to cover in this video. Just to demonstrate the basic principle and what I've done so far, if I head back to the Union Queries workbook, if I clicked the Run Query button, it's going to run a subroutine called Create SQL Query. And all that does at this point is create a very basic select statement to pick a few specific columns. There's a little expression column here as well to calculate the year of the film's release date from the film worksheet in the main movies workbook. So if I head back to my Union Queries file, click the Run Query button, I'll get a list of all the films from the film table in the movies workbook. Next, I'd like to write a union query so that in this main list of results we include all of the data from the movie's 2017 workbook and the film 2017 worksheet. This file is currently stored in the same folder as all of the other source data files and the file containing our query code, although it doesn't have to be because we can specify the file path within the query itself. To get started, let's head back to the Visual Basic Editor and I'll add a continuation character to the end of our current query and then as the basic pattern of the next select statement is the same, let's just copy and paste the SELECT list and the FROM clause. We can then change the SELECT statement on the second query to say UNION ALL SELECT. Then I just need to make sure I've modified the column names to match those that are in the Movies 2017 workbook. So we've got DISTRIBUTOR and WORLDWIDE GROSS and there's no release date column here at all. So I'm going to head back to the Visual Basic Editor, change Studio to Distributor, Box Office to Worldwide Gross, and then rather than calculating the year of a release date, which doesn't exist, as I know that all the films in this particular workbook come from the year 2017, I can just write the constant number 2017 into that select list. Next, we need to make some changes to the FROM clause of the second SELECT statement to indicate which worksheet and which file these columns are being selected from. The way this works for our system at the moment, once we've finished constructing our SQL statement, it gets passed into the subroutine called GetQueryResults. In here, we calculate the path to the main movies workbook that we want to connect to by concatenating this workbook's path to the file name of movies.xlsx. Then that path gets used in the connection string property to indicate which file to connect to, with some extra information about what type of file it is and whether it has a header row or not. We basically need to indicate the same type of information in this from clause in the second select statement. So let's start by changing the worksheet name. In the movie's 2017 workbook, the worksheet name is called Film 2017, so that part's nice and easy to change. Then to specify which file that worksheet belongs to, we can add the IN clause after the worksheet's name. 
the in clause requires two main bits of information. So as two separate strings, I'll just write these in in some, uh, some single quotes. It's the path to the file, and then a, a separate set of single quotes, information about the file type. So the path to the file, the easiest thing to do here is to construct the file name in the same way we did with the movie file path in the get query results subroutine. Let's just copy and paste everything up to, but not including the final closing double quote here. We do have a few changes to make, but I'm just gonna copy that part to help. And then rather than saying path to file, we're going to concatenate. So I'm gonna close some double quotes there just after the first single quote, and then use an ampersand to concatenate this workbook.path and the name of the file. Now, of course, again, the name of the file isn't movies.xlsx, I should say, I'll pronounce it properly eventually, it's movies2017.xlsx. So let's change the, um, the file name, let's just add space 2017 to the end. Then, once we've finished constructing the file name or the file path, we need to specify what type of file it is. And again, we can cheat here a little bit just by copying and pasting. So we can grab the Excel 12.0 XML and HDR equals yes to indicate that it does indeed have a header row. And we can paste that in to the file type section of the in clause. OK, so having done all of that, let's just head back to the main menu sheet in our Union Queries workbook, hit the Run Query button, and if we just scroll down to the very end of our list, we should now see that we've concatenated or unioned to the end of our list the 10 films from the 2017 workbook. At this point, I'd just like to add an order by clause to our query just to make it easier to demonstrate that the query is working. So I'm going to head back to the Visual Basic Editor and then at the end of the From clause, concatenate another continuation character. And then on the next line, we'll have an order by I'm going to go in descending order of release year. So I'm going to reference the alias that I created earlier on and then go in descending order. And then let's also have it sorted alphabetically by film title in each year. So we can refer to the title field and let's go in ascending order for that. OK, so having done that, we can just check that that works by heading back to the menu sheet, running the query again, and then we'll see the 2017 films are sit up at the top of this list. From this point on, everything else is pretty repetitive. If I wanted to include the data from the movie's 2018 workbook in the Film 2018 worksheet, I can quite easily just copy and paste the Union All Select and From clause from the existing examples. Let's just copy and paste those two lines. We'll paste them in before the order by clause. As you'll know if you've watched previous videos in the series, there's just one order by clause at the end of the entire Union query. The column names are the same, but I don't want to indicate that these were released in 2017. Let's update the value, the constant, to 2018. The name of the worksheet is 2018, or Film 2018. And of course, the file path is Movies 2018 as well. It's still an Excel 12 workbook, and it does indeed have a header row. So having done that, we can head back to the menu sheet and run that query again. And now we've got the 2018 films as well in the main list of results. Next, I'd like to bring in the data from the movie's 2019 workbook. And this will be a little different because in this workbook, there are no column headers. So we'll have to indicate that in the in clause that there's no header row. And also we'll have to work out how to reference these individual columns. You may already know this if you've watched previous videos in this playlist, but just in case you haven't, and it has been a while since we released that earlier video, let's head back to the Visual Basic Editor and start by copying and pasting the previous union or select and from clause, and then paste that in just before the order by clause. So we'll update the constant value first of all, 2019, and then the name of the worksheet is Film 2019 in a workbook called Movies 2019. We'll then modify the HDR property to say no, so there is no header row. And that means that we can't reference title, distributor and worldwide gross because those things don't exist in this workbook. So to reference those, we can refer to the columns using the number of the column. So starting in column A, the first column of the table will be referenced as F1, field one, then F2 and so on. 
So I want to refer to field two, three, and four. So I can head back to the Visual Basic Editor, change title to say F2, distributor to say F3, and worldwide gross to say F4. And make sure I don't get rid of that square bracket there. Okay, so having done all that, I can then head back to the menu sheet, run that query again, and I'll have 2019's data added into the same list. The next example will be a little different because to get the movie's 2020 data, we have to reference a CSV file. And here's what it looks like. So we have a header row again, so we can reference the columns by name and then 10 rows of data, just like in the other Excel workbooks. So although the reference to the file would be a little different, the basic pattern is still the same. Let's head back to the Visual Basic Editor. And as I do need to reference the column headers this time, rather than the generic field numbers, I'm going to copy and paste the union all select for the 2018 workbook. So let's start by copying that and then pasting that in just above the order by clause. I'll change the constant number to 2020 rather than 2018. And then we need to make a few changes to the structure of the from clause. For a CSV file, as you'll know if you've watched one of the previous videos in an earlier playlist about how to get data from a CSV file using ADO or ActiveX data objects, the table name or the worksheet name is essentially the name of the entire file. So rather than saying film 2020, we're going to say movies 2020.csv. So that's the entire file name of that particular CSV file. Then we, of course, don't need to reference and shouldn't reference the file name in the separate, the first part of the in clause. Here we just need to reference the folder which contains that CSV file. So I'm going to remove the movies2018.xlsx part from that section. So we refer to the folder containing the CSV file and then the table name or the worksheet name is the name of the file itself. Then, of course, we need to modify the type of file we're connecting to. So it's not an Excel 12 XML file, it's a basic text file instead. We can still indicate whether it has a header row, and indeed it does in this case. So once we've done that, we should be able to head back to the menu sheet again, hit the Run Query button, and get all the data from the 2020 CSV file mixed in with a list of all of the Excel workbooks. So there we go, there's the absolute basics of using the in clause to select data from multiple source files in the same union query. Hope you found that one useful. Thanks very much for watching as always. See you next time.